300 million people, 300 million people worldwide are sufferers of type 1 diabetes. This is a disease that has no cure. It has few treatments that are not very effective. But there is hope. There is hope. And it, is, it was confirmed to us recently by a group of researchers at Harvard University led by Doug Melton. This is a man whose two children are type 1 diabetic and has dedicated his whole life to trying to find a cure. And with his efforts, the group has managed to create or develop working insulin secreting beta cells that are reactive to glucose. My name is Liliana Rodriguez. And today I will be talking to you about how exactly this research was conducted, the findings, and how they tested to see that they were in the right track. And so, first of all, there was other research conducted. There were some efforts to do this in pain. But as you can see up here, this is a chart of the differentiation stages of the cell. And in between, you can see the, the different pieces of the diagram. So these efforts were only able to get to here. They were not able to get to a functioning beta cell. And this is important because, as we know, the cause of type 1 diabetes is the autoimmune destruction of pancreatic insulin cells, or beta cells. And the, we're not there yet. Weren't there yet up until this group took it took the test on it. Now the reason that they weren't functional was because the cells were either underdeveloped, they didn't secrete insulin, they didn't express the right markers that told the group that they, it was a beta cell, or they displayed other abnormalities. Now this group did the exact same thing as these previous efforts, but at the end here, they changed the differentiation method, added in new things, and took the cell in a different direction. In this next slide, you can see the method of the, the in vitro research which was done on not, not a baby thing alive. Um, and they did this by using tissue culture flasks. And using that previous method of cell differentiation, but when they got to that end point where it, it stopped being um, more towards a functional cell, they added in some other things, of, by guess, of course. And um, they did this until they had something that resembled the beta cell. Now once they thought they were there, they tested whether the cell was functional or not by conducting an ELISA test. Now this test was to see how much, and if at all, insulin was being secreted from the cell. Now after they found that this was successful, they then went in vivo and transplanted these cells into a mouse, into mice, and tested the same thing. Now, in this next slide, you can see the findings for the in vivo, or in vitro, excuse me. So we have three different sets of data here, and there are two control and one test. So the first control are the cells from the previous efforts, the previous differenti differentiation method, which we know don't work. They're not functional. The second one here is the ones from, are the ones from a working pancreatic, so working pancreatic cells. So we know for sure that these are ones to secrete insulin and these work. And the last one here, that 
is the, the test cells, the developed beta cells from, by this group. And as you can see here, we're measuring in units of insulin being secreted by the units of glucose being, being um, given to the cells. Now, as you can see, the pattern of the developed beta cells is extremely similar to that of the working pancreatic beta cells. Now, the reason that they did this, these different amounts of glucose in between 30 minute intervals is because they wanted to test whether or not these cells would just turn on or just turn off at any given moment. And this test shows that they are very reactive to the amount of glucose given, just like a real pancreatic cell. In this next one, we see the results from the in vivo experiment. This was after the, the, these um, functional beta cells were transplanted into um, diabetic mice. And this process only took two weeks. This was two weeks after they were transplanted. And this was huge. Previous efforts had a, um, insert, inserted unfinished beta cells into mice, and they differentiated into working beta cells, but this took four months. And there was no way for the researchers to see exactly what was going on with the cells inside of the mouse. This, so this is a huge thing. After two, only two weeks, the time that it takes to heal after this transplantation, we see that the patterns are again extremely similar. And here we are still measuring insulin, but on, on the bottom here we're measuring the per mouse, mouse number. And the bars are also different. So the white bars are at zero minutes. This is the like right away, like um, when they, they get insulin. And the black bar, that's 30 minutes later. And the measure that difference there is the, is the thing that they're measuring, the difference. As, it, as I've said before, as you can see, we have the three control groups, the one with the previous, which we know don't work, from the previous efforts, the working human pancreatic cells, and the test cells. And we can see, although there are some differences, that the, the test cells are reacting very similarly to the human pancreatic cells in a live mouse. So what exactly are the implications of this? So finding, developing a functioning beta cell is something that is huge. This is something that is paving the way towards the development of a great treatment or even a cure to this disease that is plaguing 300 million people worldwide. But another thing that we need to think about, another thing that is important to talk about are the ethics of this sort of research. As for those of you that don't know, embryonic stem cells are harvested from the embryos of humans. This is a subject that is very controversial because there are people that believe that a human is alive or someone is human at the point that they're conceived. And this would mean to those people that when these cells are harvested that you are feeling a human being. Now this is all something that we need to decide for ourselves. Are we going to conduct important research like this to try and help the 300 million people that are suffering, or do we not? This is something that is needed to talk to, to be talked about, and it's something that is needed to be thought about. But it all comes down to you as a person. I hope that this research has sparked an interest in stem cell research, or at least awareness of its importance to us as a society. With this development, we have hopes for our cures to other diseases of the future. The 
Does anyone have any questions? I think I'm doing this rectangle thing right. 